Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about zipping and unzipping files directly from your Access database. Today's question comes from Curtis in Mansfield, Texas, one of my Platinum members. Curtis says, I get an email with product pricing updates from my major vendor a couple times a week, and it comes as a zip file with a bunch of text files in it. I know how to automate the process of importing the data, but I still have to manually unzip the file after I save it to my disk. Is there a way I can have access automatically just unzip the file so I can then run the report? Yes, Curtis, absolutely. Let me show you how to unzip a file to a folder using Microsoft Access VBA. And then after that, I'll show you how to create your own zip files. All right, so before we get started, this is going to be a developer lesson. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. And also go watch my video on variables and variable declarations. These are free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. All right, so whenever I'm working with files and folders, I always want to make sure I've got a database folder set up just to run my database off of. We'll do our, our zipping and our unzipping in our database folder. So right now I just got this file on my desktop. I'm going to make a folder for it, new folder. I'll call this my DB for my database, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. And I'm going to put my database file in that database folder. All right, just keeps things cleaner. Let's open her up. I'm also going to need a zip file to play with, so I'm going to grab one from another folder that I already made. There it is. It's called myzip.zip. Really unique file name, right? <laughs> and let's see what's in this folder. I don't think it's anything important. I've got, oh, it is, of course, it's stuff that's very important. I got a picture of Captain Kirk. There we go. I got a picture of Captain Picard. Uh huh. And just a simple little text file, just stuff to test our unzipping and zipping. Okay. All right, let's go into our database file here, open her up. This is just a copy of my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website if you want to. And let's go into design view. We're going to make this our unzip button. Instead of hello world, it's now our unzip button. All right, and let's right click, build event. That's going to open up our code editor and put me right inside the hello world button click. We're going to get rid of the status that's in there. And here's where we're going to do our work. Now, first up, we're going to need a couple of variable declarations. First, we're going to need an object variable to allow us to work with files and folders on the system. You don't exactly have to understand what an object variable is at this point. Just know that it has to do with working with the file system. Okay, so we're just going to dim O as an object. We also need a source zip file and a destination folder. So we're going to dim source zip. Now, this has to be a variant for many reasons of which I'm not going to go into right now. <laughs> Just trust me. And we need a destination folder, also a variant. A variant is basically, a, it can be anything. It could be any type. It could be a number. It could be a string. It could be another object. Basically, you're saying it's an undeclared type. All right, let's set what our variables are. We're going to set O equals create object and it's going to be a shell dot application. It's basically saying this object is going to work with the application shell that allows us to work with files and folders on the system. Okay. I go over a much more in-depth explanation of what all of this is in my advanced developer classes. But for now, the goal is just to get the code to work. Sometimes, especially when you're starting out, you might come across some code that, you know, you just need it to work. You don't have to understand exactly what every single line does. Take me, for example, I don't know much about the engine of a car, but I know how to drive. All right, so you don't have to understand every single line of code here to know that it works. All right, now we're going to set what we want our source zip file to be. So source zip is going to be equal to now I want to use that my zip file that I put in the folder that's in the database folder, right? This guy. Okay, and I can refer to the current path of the database as current project dot path and then we'll put the file name you know backslash and it's my zip dot zip just like that that says i want the my zip dot zip file in the current database folder 
You could put a full path there if you want to put, you know, C colon backslash, blah, 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 whatever. All right, but this works inside the database folder. Now we need the destination folder. Equals current project dot path. And where do you want to put these files? Let's put them in a destination folder called dest folder like that. Now, it's a good idea for you to make that folder ahead of time because it won't always create it for you. So let's go ahead and just make that folder. All right, we're going to go new folder and we're going to put dest folder in. Okay, I'm pretty sure if memory serves, this code will create the folder, but it doesn't always. All right, so we've got our object variable declared so we can work with the file system. We've got a source, a zip file, we've got a destination folder. Now comes the line of code that does the actual work. Are you ready? It looks like this. O dot name space dest folder dot copy here. That basically says in my destination folder, I want you to copy here whatever comes next. What are we copying? O dot name space source zip dot items. And there you go. That basically says in the file system's namespace, which basically is a fancy word of saying the file system, okay? We're going to copy here all of the stuff that's in that source zip file. That's just the syntax you got to use. I'll be completely honest with you. I got to look this stuff up sometimes too. I don't remember it off the top of my head. It's not something that I use every day, right? Now that we're done with O, we have to destroy it. Since we use the set keyword to create it, we have to set... O equals nothing, free up that memory. Access doesn't always do a good job of cleaning up after itself. And then we can beep or something to declare that we're done. That just lets the user know, hey, you're finished. All right, get rid of whatever extra spaces we got down here. And that, my friends, should be the final code that we need right there. Let's test it. Save it. Debug compile is always a good idea. Come back over here. Let's close the form, reopen it. I'm going to click on my unzip button. All right. Nothing appeared to happen. And let's go back to our folder and check in our destination folder. And there they are. There's the files that were in the zip file. Okay. Now, there's a lot we can add to this code. There's a ton we can add to this code. For example, if you already have those files in that folder, it'll create an error message. Watch this, if I click on it again. All right, it pops up this guy, it popped up on my other monitor, right? If you want to replace the files because they already exist, I'll say, yeah, go ahead and replace them. Now, it'd be nice if you could reply all to that and just say, just overwrite them by default, and you can. There's a switch you can add over here, okay, to say, answer yes to overwrite the files, and that is 16. What is 16? Well, there's a whole list of constants on Microsoft's website. If you want to remember what that is, you can make it a constant up here and say yes to all equals 16, like that. And then just we'll, we'll put yes to all over here. So you remember that that's what that means. Okay, but now if you click the button, it just does it. And it's nice to have a little done down here too, right? I'll use my status function. Status done. Save it. All right, come out here, click the button. Right, go check your folder, and there they are. Those handsome devils, right? Now, can you verify that the files were extracted? You can do a file count, and I'll cover that in the extended cut for the members. But you can basically say, okay, there's three files in the zip file, three files were copied, and so we should be good. And there's lots of other stuff we can add to this. We can make this a function, so instead of putting the, the file names in here, you could just send them in as a function. Okay, so much you could do with this. All right, now that's unzipping a file. How do we create our own zip file? If you've got a bunch of text files that you've exported and you want to be able to zip that up and send it to someone, well, we'll cover that tomorrow in part two. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel, or members, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record it in just a few minutes. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. 
I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. 
you get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.